Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 103, the class on New Testament survey. Even before we could begin with a new book, the book of Hebrews, can I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? Amen. Amen. Am I audible to everyone? The fan is not affecting you. Can you all hear me? You all can hear me? Okay, I'm audible online, but as a class. Yeah, can you all increase the volume of the mic? Thanks, thanks, Anthony, for confirming. Yeah. So let's turn to the book of Hebrews so that we can meditate on a few scriptures. Um, so we won't be covering chapter by chapter or verse by verse, but then we are just doing a survey on this whole book of Hebrew. But what we will be doing is when you're in your third year, we will be doing a detailed study on the book of Hebrew. So we would be covering chapter by chapter. Most of the scripture verses will be covered in a detailed study. So this is about a survey. We would be uh, doing a background study on the book of Hebrews. So what do you know about the book of Hebrew? What do you know about the book of Hebrew? Anyone from the online, you all can unmute and answer, or you can post your comment on the chat. What do you know about the book of Hebrew? Who's the author of the book of Hebrew? There's no author or it's anonymous. You don't know the author. We will, you're saying Apostle Paul. Okay. Anyone else? Most likely. So we are not as sure that Apostle Paul is the author, but then most likely. You're right. Both of you are right. Okay. We don't know exactly who is the author of this book of Hebrew. Some scholars debate saying that Apostle Paul may be the author. So we will get into it and look at it. So Hebrew, the book of Hebrew is known to be the book of better things. The book of Hebrew is known to be the book of better things. It talks about the superiority of Jesus Christ. So we are going to we are going to look at some of the concerning views of this letter. The, the first thing is the authorship of this book is a major concern. Better things. Better things. The book of better things. Okay, you got it, right? Okay, I've just posted on the account. The book of better things. So some of the concerning about the authorship of this book is they want to know who was the author. Some scholars say Apostle Paul would have been the author. So the argument is still on. None of us have decided who's the author. But some of them say, so what made the scholars or the commentators say that Apostle Paul may be the author? Any reason why Renew said Apostle Paul may be the author? And Vimal, when you said Apostle Paul may be the author, what made you to say that? The style of his writing, okay. Similar to the other books, the other letters of Apostle Paul. Yes, you're right. So some of the commentators or the scholars suggest that this book 
would have been written by apostle paul or just like how rin says it's similar to the book of acts so maybe luke would have written dr luke would have written or some say apollos who had a uh, uh, who had a good knowledge on the word so apollos may have written or barnabas or aquila and priscilla so we don't know the debate is still on who is the author of this book but most of the scholars rely on apostle paul for some of the reason which we will be discussing now some say they all agree yes paul's name is not written in this book of hebrew just as like how he addressed all the other 13 letters he addresses i paul write to you he starts the very letter with his name but in the book of hebrew that's not the way it is written the author name is not written maybe one of the reason because this letter is addressed to the hebrew believers now who are these hebrew believers who are these hebrew believers they are the jewish christians now he already has a great persecute uh, cutors following from every place to place that is the jewish jewish people were totally against apostle paul they were persecuting him they stoned him to death they never allowed him to share the gospel share the good news so maybe that was one of the reason why he refrained himself from writing his name at the beginning of this letter because that may do harm to him than doing any good so paul may have hid his identity from the jewish people because of the great persecutors way from the same sect the second thing we see is there's a style of writing is slightly different from the other books the style of his writing and also the set of audience if you see the other letters apostle paul is writing his letters to the gentiles gentile believers but here it is the jewish believers he is writing to so the audience is completely different and the language in this book seem to be the pure greek in new testament which is much superior to the other epistles one of the reason could be because this particular letter is addressed to one set of people the hebrew people so the language is very important for them so you see a pure greek language the way it was written though in the book of acts we see that apostle paul was the chosen vessel by god recognized by the early church that he was the apostle to the gentiles and this in this letter the letter to hebrews there were no way no way that it is addressed to any of the gentiles it's purely dedicated toward the hebrew believers he has not mentioned anything to do with the gentile now been said that we also see in galatians chapter 2 verse 7 to 8 can we read galatians chapter 2 so more more likely we see apostle paul was sharing the gospel among the gentiles can i request you to turn to acts chapter 9 verse 
So this is what the Lord told at the time when Apostle Paul had an encounter. So God spoke to Ananias, saying, Ananias, go meet Paul. Now he's a changed person. Pray over him. Now what did the Lord tell Ananias, who was Apostle Paul? Here you see, he is a chosen vessel of mine. Now God is saying, Ananias, about Apostle Paul, saying, he is a chosen vessel of mine. Who will bear my name? He will witness me. He will bear a witness among who? Among the Gentiles. First of all, Gentiles. So that's why this calling was toward the Gentiles. Second, the kings, the people in authority. You see, God created an opportunity for Apostle Paul to minister to the people in authority. And then you see, and the children of Israel. Now, who is the children of Israel? Jews. The Hebrew believers were the children of Israel. So this may be one of the reasons why the scholars debate. Apostle Paul may be the author. Though he wrote all 13 letters addressing to the Gentile believers, to the converted Christians, but this letter is dedicated to the Hebrew Christians. And here you see there's no way mentioned about his name, his author, authorship, or about any Gentile leader because the Jews were against the Gentiles. Him writing his name or mentioning any of the Gentile leader or to the Gentile believers, the Jewish believers may neglect this letter from reading. So there is no purpose of him writing this letter. This may be one of the reasons why Apostle Paul refrained from addressing his name or any of the Gentile leaders, but he purely addressed to the Hebrew Christians. And also, he wrote this letter in favor of them in the manner that they would like to read by having a pure Greek language, by addressing to them addressing the old covenant and how much more the new covenant is better. So the whole letter is bringing a clear picture of Jesus Christ as the only Lord and Savior. He's bringing through this letter, he talks about the faith. Through this letter, he talks about the better covenant is the new covenant. Okay, and then there's certain argument for the authorship of Apostle Paul. Okay, so how? In Hebrew 13, chapter 13, verse 18 to 25. Yes. to upload the PPT. Let me upload it. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> um, Vijay, can you please come? Yeah, it's coming now. Thank you. Now it's taking. Is it seen? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about the late display on online. Okay. So the book of Hebrews, we we are talking about the argument that is happening toward the book of Hebrews. What happened? Here it's seen correctly. Okay, this is the first. Thank you. 
Okay. So some of the scholars, give me a minute, please. Yeah, we are on the right page. Okay. So some of the scholars argue on the authorship of Apostle Paul. First is when we read Hebrew chapter 13, verse 18 to 25. Can I request one of y'all to please go through it? At least the first 18 verse, 18 verse. Nineteen also. Thank you. Thank you. So what we see here, say similar style of Apostle Paul. In every letter he has a salutation addressing to certain believers and people. Here you see the same style has been followed throughout the thirteen letters from the letter to Romans, till the last letter to Philemon, you see the same style has been followed. So that may be one of the reasons why scholars believe that Apostle Paul may have been the author. The second, you see the author of this book, the author of this book may have had a Greek background by virtue. So who had Apostle Paul had a Greek background. And he was familiar with his language, the Greek language. At the same time, he was very familiar with the Jewish customs and the culture as well. Again, Apostle Paul qualifies even this. An author should have been from a Jewish background as well because of the understanding that he has toward the old covenant about the Jewish religious customs and other things. That was one of the reasons why he could so strongly write the comparison between the Old Covenant and why the New Covenant is better than the Old Covenant in the Book of Hebrews. The third point we see here is in, uh, in uh, Second Peter, Chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, you see Apostle Peter is addressing on Apostle Paul's authorship. So Peter writes to the Jewish believers and he mentions about Apostle Paul saying that, I'm just reading that scripture from online. And remember, the Lord is waiting so that the people have time to be saved. This is just as our beloved brother Paul Wright wrote to you with the wisdom of God gave him, speaking of these things in all his letters. In one of the way he is writing. So Peter is mentioning to the Jewish believers. He's not writing to the Gentiles. He's writing to the Jewish believers saying that, this is why Apostle Paul, a beloved brother, writing to you. So this scripture or this line also recommends Apostle Paul would have been the author of this letter. Sorry. The author who wrote this letter also should have been truly trained by the scriptures who had a revelation from the lord who had a relationship with the lord for him to differentiate between these two covenants the old and the new covenant and to justify that the new covenant is better so you need to have this tremendous revelation that was none other than apostle paul who had this revelation from the lord so that may be one of the reasons why the scholars tend to say that Apostle Paul. Then this letter was written by one who was in bonds. When we return to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34.
Okay, I'll just read it because of time. For you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted, joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourself in heaven. So here is mentioning that for you had compassion on me in my chains. So who was in chains? Who was in the prison? Who was in the bonds? Apostle Paul. So the authors again did the bed saying that here he is addressing about him. So there was none other than Apostle Paul behind the in the bonds. <clears throat> and also when we read chapter 13, verse 18 and 19, in the salutation which was read before, the letter was written by one who was now cut off from the Jewish believers because of the persecution that Apostle Paul had to face from the Jewish people. He was cut off from the Jewish believers. And also we see the author seemed to have been a very close associate and a travel companion with Timothy. See who accompanied Timothy or uh, whom did Timothy accompany? in the missionary journeys. He accompanied Apostle Paul in the second missionary journey. So again, the authors say this would have been again Apostle Paul to be the author of this letter. So Paul always had a tremendous desire to see the brethren saved. That's why he mentions in uh, Roman chapter 9, verse 1 to 4, he says that, uh, you know, I tell the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. So my conscious also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart for I could wish that I myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren my countrymen according to the flesh so he had a great desire to see even the Jewish believers being saved <coughs> Excuse me. So we all know to whom was this letter addressed and written to? Whom was this letter been addressed or written to? The Jewish believers or the Hebrew Christians. So it was written to the saints. Did the slide change? Okay, so this book of Hebrew was written to the saints of the one who were not very new Christians, but then who followed Jesus, who accepted the scripture from a very long time. And also when we read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, we see that, but recall the former days in which after you were illum Ill sorry. illuminated, you endure a great struggle with suffering. So this letter was written to the saints who had suffered greatly through the persecution and the hardship under the uh, leader under the uh, emperor Nero. Nero were persecuting the believers, persecuting the Christians. So the, the letter, the author of Hebrew is encouraging, is encouraging uh, the believers, saying that he gives a message through this book of Hebrew, saying the message of the superiority of Jesus was very important to the Jewish Christians in Rome who were struggling under the leadership or under the emperorship of Nero because he was literally persecuting the Christians. He was giving Christians as the food to the beast. He was feeding to them or he was lighting. I mean, he, he nailed them on the cross and he lit them as a torchlight on the street of Rome so that the others who were following the gospel of Jesus Christ may turn back and come back to the Mosaic law, come back to the old covenant. 
this was one of the reasons why the author of the book of Hebrews encouraging the believers, the, uh, the, uh, the Jewish Christians or the Hebrew Christians to go through the persecution, to endure the persecution. He is encouraging them to set your focus on Jesus, set your focus on the greater reward. The persecution that you endure is a short while. When you reach, you get a bigger reward in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the eternal life in him. So he is encouraging them to face the persecution, go through what you are going through, but don't give up. Because you are holding on to a better covenant than the Mosaic law. Yeah. And we also see, scholars suggest that the church at Jerusalem was the original recipient of this letter. So the Jewish believers were in the church of Jerusalem, which was headed by James. The brother of Jesus was a senior pastor of the Jerusalem church. So this letter was addressed firstly to the church of Jerusalem. And after that, this letter was circulated toward the other churches. Probably this book would have written between 62 to 64 AD. For one of the reasons why this letter was addressed to the second generation of the believers. So, uh, and also, this letter was ad uh, addressed before the heaviest persecution of the Emperor Nero. And also, the temple at Jerusalem was still there. And because it was there, there was a high priest there and uh, the sacrifices were there. That's why in the book of Hebrew, chapter 8, verse 4, can I request you to turn to chapter 8, verse 4. We see that for if he were on earth, he's talking about Jesus, okay, he would not be a priest since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. Of the was written when the church was there. So that was one of the reasons why the scholars came up with the period of 62 to 64 AD. Now, why do we call the book of Hebrew as the book of better things? The slightest change on online and in the class. Okay. Now tell me, why was the book of Hebrew considered to be as the book of better things? The purpose of this book is written for us for better things. It's showing the comparison between the old covenant and the new covenant. There are two words, key words that are very prominent in this book. Talks about better. Many scripture verses in the book of Hebrew talks about better, greater. So that was one of the reasons the author of the book of Hebrew is comparing this is the book of better things. He's comparing that Jesus is presented as the preeminent one, one who established the new and the better covenant. And he goes ahead further and he says that Jesus is greater than anything that you believe. He's addressing to the Hebrew Christians who believed on the prophets. They believed that Moses was the great prophet. So here, the author of this book is addressing, no, Jesus Christ is better and greater than the prophets that you believe. He is greater than the pro uh, angels that you look upon. He is greater than the Moses. He is greater than Joshua. He is greater than the Aaron who was the first high priest. He is greater than Abraham. Because Jesus, when he was there, he addressed himself saying, I am. 
I am was before Abraham. And he says the law then. Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but he came to establish it. He's greater than that law. And he's saying, the author is also saying that the new covenant is better than the old covenant. In what ways? Yeah, the new covenant is better than the old covenant. In what ways? Because the new covenant has a better revelation. It gives us hope. When you read through those scriptures, I've mentioned all the scriptures, we see that it is better than the other revelation. It's better than the hope because it is Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the revelation. He is the great high priest. The new covenant is better than the old covenant. The promises are much greater in the new covenant that brings life to the dead. The blood of Jesus redeems us from every sin. It's no more the covering. In the old covenant, the blood of the animal was just a cover. But in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus gives us a redemption. It makes us righteous. It makes us gives us a right standing in front of God. The sacrifice of the animal is better than the Jesus. Jesus sacrificed once and for all on the cross. We have a great possession in Christ now. In Christ, we have been seated at the right hand of God, which is the highest position that we have in Christ Jesus. That is the great and the highest position. There is no more position higher than that. We are being seated in Christ at the right hand of God. The possession has been restored through the sacrifice of Jesus. And in Hebrew 11, 16, it talks about the new heaven as a country. In Old Covenant, it talks about Jerusalem, but in New Covenant, it talks about the new heaven that we will be possessed in Christ Jesus. So some of the unique features that we can discuss in the book of Hebrew, we see that the Jesus is the high priest, is both merciful and he is faithful. We also see that um, Jesus Christ as a high priest, he has gone into the highest place. And he's interceding for you and me. He is the sinless and the spotless lamb. He is our sympathizer. He is our eternal high priest. He is a forerunner. He is greater than the father Abraham. He is much higher. There's no more sickness, disease or any kind of weakness. And he is seated. Jesus Christ is seated at the highest possession, the right hand of the Father, and he is our intercessor. He has sacrificed himself as a one-time sacrifice, so we don't have to offer any more sacrifice for our sin. So we see the unique feature is Jesus himself. The book of Hebrew also presents as the greatest definition and the example of faith. So we see in chapter 11 to be the heroes of faith, where it starts like this in Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1. Can we look into that? Sorry, yeah. Chapter 11, verse 1. Talks, it starts like this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It starts with that and it goes on. When we read Verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, that is, please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So here, the whole scripture, the whole chapter, the author of this Hebrew addresses on faith, he addresses faith on God and then he addresses faith of the people from the old death, old covenant. He talks about the faith of Abel, Enoch, Noah, talks about Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, 
Jacob, Joseph, and then he goes on to Moses and the children of Israel. But he never misses on any of the prophets that they believed on. And he, 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 he clearly says that the faith on Jesus Christ is more important. And he also addresses on the faith on the people who are been persecuted because he is addressing to them to strengthen their faith. So here we see when we talk about this letter, we see the whole letter is also encouraging us to have faith on Jesus Christ. Set your focus on Jesus Christ because he is much more superior. The old covenant. Sorry, the new covenant is much more superior than the old covenant. So the, the apostle, Paul, I mean, the writer of the letter to Hebrew, is bringing towards the faith that we should have on Jesus Christ. He's also taking the opportunity. See, everywhere, this is one of the reasons why the scholars say the author may be Apostle Paul, because when we studied throughout the 13 letters, everywhere you see there was an issue or a problem, Apostle Paul brought in the solution through the gospel. Now, in the letter of Hebrew, you see what was the problem here? Is addressing to the persecuted Christians to strengthen their faith on Jesus Christ. How? He's bringing a comparison between the old and the new and addressing them, hold on to the persecution, persevere, endure this, this is just for a shorter while. But look at Jesus, the greater reward that you would be getting. So even in this period, he's bringing the good news of the gospel. By saying endure it, just like how Jesus endured, you endure it, for your reward is greater in heaven. So that may be one of the reasons why the scholars believe that Apostle Paul may have been the author because his style of bringing the gospel message here by encouraging people. He also encourages, um, you know, the Hebrew Christian saying that, let not your idol be on any of the prophets or angels or on the old covenant or on the Mosaic law, or on Moses himself, let your idol, let the priority, let your focus be on Jesus Christ. So now, just like how the author of the book of Hebrew is encouraging the Hebrew Christians, today you and I can look into this letter and learn who is our idol, who is our priority in our life. Who's the priority? Who are we holding on to in our life? Is Jesus our focus? Because in the present world we have seen and experienced the limitless bounty of idolatry in anyone's life. So we may use any of the created objects or the created being as the idol. But then, here, through this letter of Hebrew, the author is making it very clear to you and I, saying that there's only one person who deserves to hold that primary place in our life. That's Jesus Christ. Because he is the only one who died for you and me. He was a spotless lamb. He was that sacrifice that one time sacrifice who sacrificed himself on the cross. He shed his blood. He washed our sins and made us pure. He restored our relationship with God. He gave us the highest position to be seated at the right hand of God. We cannot get that through anyone else other than Jesus Christ. So he should be the main place in the heart and our mind. Nothing else and no one else. So we should get Jesus as the highest priority in our life. He is to be in the better position. He is the greatest high priest. He is the better covenant. He is the greatest hope that we can hold upon. He is the better sacrifice who have died for us. So only... Uh, 
only when we give Jesus the rightful place in our life, we will see everything else in our life fall in its place, the rightful place. If we are struggling in any area, just look into our life and see, are we giving Jesus the right place? So through this letter, we see the author of this letter saying that Jesus is absolutely the superior, who is the revelation of God himself. And he is our eternal high priest. This is what the, the book of Hebrew talking about. That we need to honor Jesus, give him the right place. He is the better covenant. He is our God. So with that, we will end this session. And if there's anyone who would like to share on this letter, please feel free to share about your learning or is there anything new that you would like to add on? Please feel free. Before we could get into a time of prayer. <laughs> Okay, so I see that there's no questions. Jacqueline, would you like to pray? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, if your mic is fine, please go yeah. ahead. Uh, can help. somebody check if Jacqueline's voice is heard? Can you hear me? One second, checking. One second, we're just checking. Can you speak? Yeah, so can you hear now? I think the volume of the speaker needs to be increased. She's. Uh, can you speak, Jacqueline? Yes. Now, can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. The volume to be increased. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord, that you have given each of us, Lord, to look into your word and learn from you, Father God. Father, even as we meditate upon this book of Hebrews, Lord God Almighty, Father, what a privilege we have, Lord, that we have come to the new covenant, Father God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Father God. Father, you are yourself seated on the right throne, interceding for each of us. You are a high priest, Father God. There is nothing that we have to fear or worry, Lord God Almighty. Help each of us, Lord, to make you our first priority, Lord. And Lord Almighty, you love us as we are, Father God. And we can come to you with all boldness, Lord, crying out to you, Abba, Father. And that's the highest privilege we have, Lord God Almighty. You've given us your word. And Lord, everything else, Lord, you've given us your life and everything else, Father God. Help each of us, Lord, to surrender, Lord, to your word and live in the power of your word, Lord God. And you have crushed Satan above all, Father God. And above everything, you have exalted yourself, Father God. Father, help us, Lord, each of us, Lord, to come to the realization of this truth that you love us as we are. And we have a high priest, Lord God, Jesus Christ, interceding for each of us. And what more do we need, Lord God Almighty? Lord, help us, Lord, to imbibe this truth and walk in this truth lord every day of our lives lord so that we become more and more like jesus our god almighty and glorify you in our thoughts in our word and everything that we do father god. in jesus mighty matchless name we pray amen amen thank you Jacqueline. thank you everyone for joining in today's session god bless you all with the next letter next thank you god bless